Welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing us with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed us to yet be on this to time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for the diligent service to the gospel truth. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers, and I'm praying that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And of course, I am encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And again, as we always do, We'd like to make you mindful of the fact that we know that every now and then somebody might come by and ask you to do them a favor. Uh -huh. uh, they need a little help, and can you help me out? I need a favor. And uh, maybe you're not in a position to help them. Maybe you are. If you are, then of course you do what you can. But if you can't, just give them the referral to 211. And when they call 211, they can state to the representative what their particular need or concern is, and then they will be directed to the source to help them to eliminate that particular need. It could be a food service program or an after-school program, child care, uh, utility assistance or rental assistance or service of a battered woman, and, and much, much more. So just remember 211, and then you can give some help to somebody who's in need that perhaps you can't help. But remember, you always do what you can, all right? And then also we want to keep you uh, mindful of the fact that there are places available where you can go and find yourself uh, gainfully employed or have access to job leads. If you are unemployed and you are looking for work or if you're employed and you're looking for a better job, let me refer you to the East Bay Works One Stop Career Centers. They are located throughout Alameda and Contra Costa counties. So if you go online to eastbayworks.org, there you will be able to bring up the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. You can go out there, find yourself in a world of jobs with job leads and uh, telephones and fax machines and computers and resume writing workshops, or they can even critique your resume. It provides you with a mock interview that will help you to get over the jitters that you might have when you're before a prospective employer. So remember eastbayworks.org and uh, if you go there you'll come find the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. All right so just keep that in mind. So this evening before we get to the message we will be playing uh, be dealing with our prayer list. So uh, you're always encouraged to write to us and to send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones. And I will add their names to the prayer list. I'll pray for them, encourage you to pray for them, and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them, pray for them as well. So this evening, we want to get started with uh, the Jacksons. So we want to start with Alan IV, Titus, Brittany, and Alvante. Also, we want to pray for Alvante. And then Brother Jimmy Parker and Mr. Leonard Johnson. We're also praying on behalf of Allison and Tony Eastman and Andrew Eastman. We're praying for Dr. Janice Marshburn and Mr. and Mrs. Luckett, Sister Teresa H Hudson and family, Sister Elaine Pinnell and also Sister Lorise Williams, Sister Gertrude Tolliver and the Stevensons, Jesse Jr., Sylvester and Dicey. We're also praying on behalf of Jesse Clark and Jessica, Sylvester Jr., Anika, 
Elijah Lewis and Josiah. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Mary Marshall and Sister Mildred Perkins, Brother Alan Frazier and Sister Bertha Reed. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Christine Aubrey and Sister Maria Wilson and Sister Ethel Jackson, Sister Ed Nettie Hamilton, Lewis and James Russell, or James Williams, brother, it's Lewis and James Williams, and Sister Minnie Russell. We're also praying on behalf of Brother Wilbur Jordan, Pastor Black, Sister Helen Yancey, and also Sister Esther Gabriel, Brother Herbert Lester, and Mr. Eric Mitchell. We're also praying on behalf of Brother John E. Carson and family, Sister Dorothy Lofton, Sister Margaret Belton, Mrs. E.D. Parker, the Marx family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Ida B. Rockwell, Brother Eugene Williams, Sister Tony Germany, and also uh, Sister Ethel Gary. We're also praying on behalf of Trina Josie and family, and Ron Thrower and family, Brother Keith L. Carson and family, Brother Frank Davis, Brother Robert Bryant, and we're also praying on behalf of Mrs. Jones, Brianna Shands, Al and Wendy Cummings, Norma Coker, Dave and Sadie Abraham, Sister Marion S. Harrison, and Sister Gwen Murray, Ms. Hicks, and the Bellamy family. We're praying on behalf of the Andrew family, Dolly and Michael and Kip Andrews, and we're praying on behalf of Sister Marilyn Pauley and family, and Sister Shantae Wilson, Ronald and Francis, Sister Hannah Parker, and we're also praying on behalf of uh, Mrs. Anna L. Moore, Mr. Gaylord Kelly and family, Crystal Ewell, Martha Dykus, Maddie Williams, Malachi Ewell, Amber Anamani, Antoinette and Alex. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Betty Lou Wright, Sister Mary Jo A.H. Carson, Sister Yvonne Johnson, Sister Patricia Benjamin, Sister Lucille Cox, Dr. Stephanie Pinnell Phillips and family. And we're also praying on behalf of Miss Nicole Mosley, Sister Davina Watson, and also Mary Johnson, Sister Thelma Harris, Trey Stewart, Joe Jackson Jr. and Joe Jackson Sr. and Myron Jackson. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Idell Hearns and Brother Woodrow Russell, Sister Grace Ewell, Zemi Champion, Brother Isadora Davis and Sister Fanny Duran and family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Teresa Bozeman and Sister Linda Green and family. Sister Edwina and Sister Matilda Dunn. Sister Annie Riley and family. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Shirley Burnell and Mr. Juan Fernando. Ooh. Mr. Andre uh, Vallejo and Sister Teresa Wanzo. Uh, Michael Jones. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Odeer. Mr. Eddie Langford and family, let me say happy birthday to Eddie Langford. He's our uh, cinematographer, and he's uh, having a great year today, and so we just want God to continue to bless him and his family. We're praying also on behalf of Charles and Yolanda Stewart, uh, Sister Moselle Lester, Sister Yvonne Hutchings French, and we're also praying also on behalf of uh, Brother Hawkins and uh, Brother Ant Adams, uh, Regina Gilmore. Freddie and Sister Mims. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Skurlock, uh, Edward Kelly, uh, the Flowers family, Sister Annie B. McGowan, Sister Cynthia Blackshire, John and Monique Deering. And we're also praying on behalf of Damon and Darnell Timms, Sister Ruthie Blackshire, family and friends. And we're also praying on behalf of Mr. Roy Edmondson Jr. and uh, Mr. Roy Couch Jr. and Mr. Roy Couch Sr. Mr. Devick, Devin Levine and his parents. Uh, we're also praying on behalf of Sister Nikki Sinclair, Ryan and Natasha, Roy and Carmen. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Patricia Roach, Sister Pearl Clay, Sister Connie Devac, Mrs. Robin Cook, Sister Hazel Brown and Deborah Wade. We're also praying on behalf of Devane Stewart and Melody Parker. Sister Cynthia Baumgartner, and we're also praying on behalf of Mars Jackson, and Sister Lucille Kasuga, uh, Gwen Fight. We're also praying on behalf of Wanda McCree and family, Sister Nelda O'Neill and Alice Richardson. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Trisolina Smith and Sister Ruby Richardson, Sister Betty Hill and 
Brother Carol Thornton. Uh, we're praying also on behalf of Deacon Sam Richardson. And we're also uh, praying on behalf of the bereaved families that have experienced the loss of loved ones. Uh, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister uh, uh, Yvonne Johnson, who lost her brother. So we're praying that God will comfort them during this time of their bereavement. So remember, you can write to us and send us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones. We will add their names to the prayer list. And uh, you can uh, know that I'll pray for them and encourage you to pray for them and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. And you were listening to uh, Brother C.L. White, who was singing for us in the background. So tonight, let me invite your attention, first of all, to the book of 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, and the verse is number 11. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, and the verse is number 11. And uh, what I want to do is let you know, I want to call the lesson today, Do Yourself a Favor. Uh -huh. Do Yourself a Favor. Now, people are always coming to you from time to time, and, or maybe you're always going to somebody else and saying, hey, look, I need you to do me a favor. So this morning, this evening rather, I want you to be cognizant of the fact that you can do yourself a favor. And so before I get into the depths of that, I want to give you uh, a preliminary. So first of all, from the book uh, 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, the verses number 11, the Bible says, if any man speak... Let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. All right? So then I want to, in conjunction with that verse, I want to take you over to the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, and the verse is number uh, 18. And it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of of the world. All right? So now before I get to you with regards to doing yourself a favor, I want to give you some divine definition so you'll know what the Lord does require of you as his children. All right? So the first uh, 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 divine definition I want to bring to your mind is that of baptism. So I want to take you over now to the book of Colossians, if you will. And in the book of Colossians, the uh, second chapter and the verses number 12, you'll be able to hear the Apostle Paul as he gives reference to this matter. All right, this is Colossians, the second chapter and the verses number 12. Now, I'm trying to define for you this evening baptism, all right? So listen to what the Bible says. In fact, it says, we are buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. All right, now baptism, I want you to understand, first of all, it is a commandment of Jesus Christ. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. He said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So first of all, baptism is a divine commandment. It's a commandment that Jesus requires for you to enter in to the kingdom of God. Yes, you must do several things before you get to baptism, but baptism is the key that gets you in. You have to hear the gospel, believe it, repent of your sins, confess Jesus as Lord, and then be buried in baptism. And we understand that buried, baptism is a burial, and it's in water. And Jesus was our example in that he went to John to be baptized in water. So if it was not a commandment, if it wasn't necessary, Jesus would not have required it of you, all right? So again, we are looking at the church, all right? I want to give you a definition of the church. The book is Colossians, the first chapter, and the verses number 18. And this is what we understand about the church, all right? We understand it is a body uh, of 
called out believers. And Colossians, the first chapter, lets us know that the body is the church. Body Bible says, and he is the head of the body. He, meaning Christ, is the head of the body. It's his church. And then he goes on to say the church. So in other words, as Paul is penning this particular verse, he's defining for us what the body is. He says, and he is the head of the body, the church, all right, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. In other words, Jesus Christ is the head, and he is the only one that has the preeminence in the church. In other words, the body is the church, and then Jesus only built one body, all right, his body. And over in the book of uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, you can uh, bear that out in scriptural reference to understand also that there's only just one body. If you go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the verses number four, the Bible says there is one body. Now that you know that the body is the church, let me in, insert church here so you'll understand there is one church and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. And the Lord wants us to be united with one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, all right? And then I want you to be mindful of the fact that you are required to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. John 4 and 24, the Bible says, for God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And what we're talking about is with the right mind, the right frame of mind, the right attitude, and truth according to God's holy and divine word. You can't bring in anything that God has not authorized to worship him. You understand that when people do things that they haven't been authorized to do in the worship, then it has some fatal consequences. And you might remember Nadab and Abihu and what they did. They brought in some incense, some strange fire that had not been authorized by God in the worship. And they were consumed immediately for doing things that were contrary to the will of God. And then as we look at the church, it is an organization, and it's comprised of ministers and elders and deacons, and those are the workers and all the members. But you see, uh, God has given a great responsibility to that of the elders. And if you go over to the book of uh, Acts, the 20th chapter, in the verses number 28, you can see what the Lord has required of the elders. That's Acts, the 20th chapter, and the verses number 28. The Bible says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. So elders, you have a great responsibility. So you must understand that you are required uh -huh, to meet the requirements that the Lord has set out for you in order for you to be a qualified elder. And if you are in the position and you're not qualified, then you're simply going to create a problem for the church. So it's ultimately responsibility of the ministers to make sure that when they bring forth men who are aspiring to become elders, that they meet all the requirements exactly as God has stated. You can't cut any corners when it comes down to being obedient to God's holy and divine word. If you do, you will suffer some consequences. Understand, we always talk about how busy Satan is and how powerful he is, but sometimes we forget that God is also powerful and he can reach down and try to make you see he's the one that brings some of these storms in our lives. Remember Jonah? He was running away from God and God sent a storm down into the sea and and got Jonah's attention and all those that were on the ship. And finally, they had to throw Jonah overboard. And then there was a calm that came. So you see, when you cut corners, when you fail to do what God has required, he can bring a storm in your life. It can be all, could be a health storm, could be a financial storm, it could be a, 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 a marital storm. He can bring storms into your life. You need to understand that. All right, so what must you do? You must live right according to God's holy and divine word. Over in the book of Revelation, the second chapter, and if you go to Revelation, the second chapter, in the verse number 10, you can hear uh, the writer as he says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. 
Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, all right, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Huh? Be thou faithful unto death. And then Jesus says what? And I will give thee a crown of life. So you have to live right, walk right, talk right. And by doing that, the Lord says, I will give you a crown of life. And then from this little part here, these divine definitions, and I'm going to bring that part to a conclusion, but I want you to understand that eternity, uh-huh, eternity is what the end of life's journey is all about because this life that we're living in is a temporary situation. Nobody came here to stay. We're all leaving, all right? Over in the book of Matthew, the 25th uh, uh, chapter and the verses number 46, all right? We can hear the words of Jesus as uh, he makes this declaration, all right? This is Matthew, the 26th chapter and the verses number 46. Hear Jesus as he uh, makes, these, makes this clear to us. In fact, uh, that's actually Matthew, the 28th chapter and the verses number 46. And this is uh, what Jesus has to say here. Let me make sure here. He says, go into all the world. Okay, you know, it's actually uh, 26. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is that Jesus is making a promise that those who will live right and do right, they will enter into life eternal. All right? But then there are those who are going to have a problem. Actually, it's Matthew, the 25th chapter, and the verse number 46. That's what it is. All right? And this is what Jesus says. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So you see, this is a temporary situation that we're experiencing right now, but eternity is what is to come. Eternity is that timeless state after death. It is ceaseless. It just goes on and on. It's infinite time. Now, you need to understand, Jesus is saying that those that do wrong are going to go into everlasting punishment. Those that do right into life eternal. So now what is it I want you to do? I want you to do yourself a favor. I want you to do yourself a favor. What favor do you want me to do, Brother Jackson? First of all, I want you to seek God first. The Bible says over in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the verses number 33 and 34, this, these are the words of Jesus. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. And somebody says, well, what are the things that will be added unto me? Well, what is it that you need? Uh -huh. I have another verse that I'm going to give reference to here in a minute that you'll be able to see and understand. Then in verse number 34, Jesus says, take therefore no thought for the morrow, all right? For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. Now, the Lord is simply saying, look, if you seek me first, my kingdom, my righteousness, then everything that you are in need of or thing that you think you need, then God himself is going to provide those things for you. If you will, let, let's uh, go right over to the book of Luke. And in Luke, we can hear Jesus also saying the same thing, but he, he clarifies it and makes it clear so there's no question in anybody's mind with regards to what Jesus will do. All right, so this is Luke, the 12th chapter, and the verses number 28, uh, we hear him saying this, all right? If then God so clothes the grass, which is today and in the field, uh, tomorrow and is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And then he says, and seek not ye what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be ye double-minded or doubtful-minded. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that you have need of these things. Verse 31, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So your clothing, your food, and all those things that you're standing in need of, believe me, if you do yourself a favor and seek the Lord first, then you will have all the things that you are in need of. Let me go over to uh, Psalms here for a moment, and let's listen to David, because David also makes it clear. In Psalms, the 34th division, in verse number 9, he says, Oh, fear the Lord. Ye his saints, for there is no want 
to them that fear him. If you fear the Lord and trust him, you don't have a need for a want for anything. And David told you that over there in uh, 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Why don't you want, David? Because God has provided for me everything that I need. So do yourself a favor. Seek the Lord first. All right, and then everything that you need will be granted unto you. And then, of course, you know what you need to do? After you seek him first, then you need to be prepared to receive all the blessings that the Lord will give you. And you need to understand that he's going to put so much stuff on you that you won't even have enough room to bear it all or carry it all, right? This is what he says over in Luke, uh, the uh, sixth chapter, and verses number 38. Give, listen now, Jesus says, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom, all right? For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Do yourself a favor, seek the Lord, and then be prepared to receive, what, all of the blessings that the Lord will bestow upon you, all right? And then finally, in doing yourself a favor, you need to keep this in mind. You have no need to worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow when it comes, it's going to have a different set of situations that you have to contend with tomorrow. In the meantime, be satisfied with today. Be satisfied with today's blessings. And God will help you to overcome whatever the problem is that you're experiencing today. So don't stress yourself out over something that might happen tomorrow. All right? Just be diligent and deal with the things that you have to deal with today. All right? And this is what the Bible says there uh, with regards to that matter. He says, uh, uh, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is life, uh, is not more life more than meat and the body raiment, all right? And then he just makes it very clear that we don't need to think about it. He says, don't worry about it. Take, therefore, no thought for tomorrow, all right? The message is yours. I hope you do yourself a favor. Come to the Lord by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. By doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. The gospel truth is inviting you to join us again next week if it's God's will. We will once again come your way bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. So until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.